Hi, I'm Wayne and this is Bastor Woodworking. And as usual, I made a whole bunch of changes to my shop. As many of you may know, I am in the middle of a multi-part complete overhaul of my wood shop. Um, I'm building new cabinets, new work surfaces, and everything like that. So the next piece that I have to address is my homemade disc sander. There's nothing wrong with it functionally, it's just very overcomplicated, a lot bigger than it needs to be, and I want to completely redo this and make it a benchtop machine. I think it's always a lot of fun when you take apart something that you don't really remember all that well putting together, and you kind of reverse engineer the process that you went through. Like, I had zero memory that I made these little metal brackets to reinforce the 2x4s because I didn't think the 2x4s would be strong enough. Um, this entire thing is just constructed with um, butt joints, wood glue, and um, like two inch brad nails. So, I was probably right. I think I'm just going to have the disc run directly off the arbor of the motor. Um, there are definite advantages to having the disc sander be belt driven, but I don't think any of those use cases are really going to make or break this. Um, stalling the disc and having it slip a belt has never really happened to me ever, so I feel okay just mounting the disc to the arbor and building a housing around it to try to keep as much of the sawdust off of the direct um, body of the motor as possible. All I need to do now is um, rewire the motor so that it runs counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Okay, that should be counterclockwise. It wasn't. This should spin counterclockwise now when you're looking at it. So that was a little annoying. annoying. Um, the wiring diagram assumes that you're looking at the motor from the fan side not from the arbor side, which is really weird. So when I wired it counterclockwise as if you were looking at it, um, it continued to spin clockwise from my perspective because I wasn't looking at it from the fan side. So that's dumb. I then cleaned up the arbor using some 220 grit sandpaper so that the sanding disc would slide on and off smoothly. Okay, full disclosure, it's been a few weeks since I've touched the disc sander. Um, I got caught up with a bunch of other projects, and then I got the dust collector, all that stuff. So I'm going to try to finish the disc sander today. So I did end up taking apart the motor just to check the bearings and everything. That I figured I have the entire disc sander apart, I might as well take a look at it while I have it. Um, accessible and the bearings actually seem fine they glide nicely I do see quite a bit of um, the beginnings of corrosion along along all the rims here and I assume that's from the old shop it was not um, a great place to be working so I'm going to just kind of like clean all that off I'm going to continue taking this all apart and then I'm going to just pack everything back in grease and put it all back together and see if any improvement is made. I could then start laying out the base for the sander. I use scrap material whenever possible in this build. I started by taking some scrap pieces and cutting them down to act as a motorizer so that the 10 inch disc would spin about an inch from the base of the sander. I then turned my attention to the sides of the machine, again utilizing scrap material. I wanted the sides to sit just under 3 quarters of an inch lower than the center of the disc. I mounted my riser blocks roughly center on the base using number 8 wood screws. I used a piece of scrap material as a parallel reference for the disc.
I mounted the motor using some wood screws. Using some glue and wood screws, I attached the sides of the machine. I cut a notch out of one of the sides to accommodate the wiring box. I cut a cross brace that sits behind the disc. I'm not sure if this piece was actually necessary. I then cut and mounted the front of the machine using glue and wood screws. This is where I realized I forgot to install the disc before assembling the front. So I had to remove the motor to install the disc, but it wasn't a big deal. I then turned my attention to the tabletop. I raised my 10 inch table saw blade through the center of the board to give myself a guide cut exactly parallel to the front and back edges, and then finished the slot using my trim router. I notched out the back of the table on the bandsaw to accommodate the back of the disc. And mounted the table using some wood screws. I used my trim router to round over the outer edges of the table and then cleaned it up with a sanding block. I removed the table for sanding and finishing. I mounted some rubber feet to the bottom of the machine and then did a sanding on all surfaces, first to 150 and then to 220 grits, before reinstalling the tabletop for a coat of shellac. It was at this point that I decided to make sure that the disc was square to the tabletop. I should have done this way sooner, but I got lucky and it was perfectly square. So cool. I attached the power switch and it was ready for its first test before applying some finish. With the sander working well, I brushed a light initial coat of shellac on all surfaces. I have one coat of shellac on the tabletop and any of the exterior of the sander. Um, once that is all dry, I'm going to figure out a cover for the rest of the motor and then I will swap out the sandpaper for our new sheet. I think that's gonna do it for this video. I will finish it up and do the entire outer housing in the next video. I still haven't really figured out what that's going to look like, how it's gonna latch, all that stuff. So I should probably figure that out before I continue. So I'll let the shellac dry, I'll sand everything and put another coat on, and then I can start addressing the outer housing in the next video. So thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to keep up to date with new projects as they are released. And until next time, thank you.